Hello everybody and uh, welcome to today's session on important topics to study from bioprocess engineering for GATE biotech exam. I am Dr. Vaishali, uh, the academic spe support specialist at Biotechnica. Uh, so today we'll be looking at what are the types of questions asked during GATE exam. Second, why bioprocess engineering is important unit. And third, what are the important units units or topics in bioprocess engineering and fourth what are the topics among these which are theory based and numerical based now before we start uh, today's session uh, let me take you all back to your uh, college exam days right uh, have you have you wondered how your teachers are creative uh, when they are framing questions? Like a, a one single question can be framed in multiple ways like what, why, when, how. Well, have you also wondered if the same can be done with MCQs? Well, yes, that is what uh, happens in GATE biotech exams. So uh, we are here now to see the different question types that is uh, uh, that is being framed or given during gate examination. The first is a direct MCQ, that is a statement a question is asked and four different uh, options are given and you're supposed to choose which is the right one. The second is the fill in the blanks, which is almost the same as direct MCQ, uh, except that there'll be a blank, which you will have to choose the correct answer from. So in both of these questions, you either know the answer or you don't know the answer. But in the third, that is the match the following, right? So in match the following, you basically have, uh, so it gets tricky. So what happens is, uh, for example, you have, uh, they have given you four enzymes and they have given four functions of these enzymes and you're supposed to match all of these and there are options given of the uh, right answer now if you know all the answers all the matches it's well and good but if not for example you know the first one and you're a little dicey about the second and you have no idea about the third and fourth if for example there was a direct question about the first uh, match itself you would have easily answered it but in this case you will have to know every uh, single match for you to get the right answer so that is when it gets tricky right the next is true or false so what happens here is they give you two statements statement a and statement b now these could be facts uh, these could be correct statements or false so and they give you options to select from where the first option would be both are true the second option would be both are false. Third option would be the first one is true and the second one is false. And the fourth option would be the first one is false and the second one is true. So here, even if you know the first or even if you know one of these statements and you don't know the other, you're in a fix. Because for example, I know, I definitely know that statement A is right. Then obviously I'm eliminating B and uh, D. Uh, but again, for me to choose between A and C, I have to know about statement B as well. So that is where it gets tricky and that is how the question paper's difficulty is being set. The next is the equation or reaction based questions, right? Uh, so here what happens is a chemical reaction is being given and uh, you're supposed to and a questions would follow that. For example, say stoichiometry, right? Uh, you might, so a, a, a equation could be given and you might be asked to find the elemental compositions of uh, this equation. Now, the next one is numericals. Now, why does numerical get tricky? So it is mainly because of the time that it takes, right? You might know the formula, you might know how to solve it, but the question is you have to solve it and it obviously takes time. So this is where, uh, this is how the numericals get tricky in uh, when you're giving a competitive exam, right? Now, moving on, why is the unit five that is by process engineering important for gate biotechnology? Well, the first is that 
around 10 to 15 percent of weightage is given uh, for this particular unit in the examination. That is, uh, say for example, you have around uh, 50 questions in biotechnology section, like apart from the general aptitude I'm talking. Then in, from this, around five to six questions will be from bioprocess engineering, which makes it like uh, all the more important for you to uh, know the important topics in this unit and to read it thoroughly. The second is because this is one of the unit that is picked up for numericals. So as we saw in the previous slide that uh, why numericals are important and uh, why it is uh, tricky and it takes a lot of time. So and this is one of those units in the syllabus which um, is very numerical intensive. So it makes it all the more important for you to know what are the numerical based questions and what are the theory based uh, topics in this particular unit and that is what we are going to see. Now the first subsection in uh, bioprocess engineering is bioreaction engineering and uh, the first topic here is the rate law. So you have uh, two topics one is zero order kinetics and first order kinetics. So it's important to know the definition of these and uh, the examples right. And uh, yes, this is a numerical based topic. Second, we have ideal reactors that is batch, mixed flow and plug flow. So it's important to know the differences between these uh, reactors and examples for these reactors. And so this becomes a theory based topic. Next is enzyme immobilization. What is enzyme immobilization? So it is the entrapment of enzyme in a support system. So here we will need to know the different methods that is used for such immobilization and uh, you know what are the support systems that is used in each of these methods etc. So it's basically a theory based topic. Next we have diffusion effects that is uh, Thiel's modulus effectiveness factor and damp color number. So multiple questions have been asked in the previous year question papers as well. And this is a particularly numerical based topic. And uh, also there, there are uh, questions, theory based questions also. So it's uh, very important to know the definition and uh, the theory behind all of these as well. Next moving on is the growth kinetics, right? So uh, here is the graph of uh, the growth kinetics. Uh, so here it's uh, important to know all the phases in uh, the microbial growth and what are the salient features of these phases. And uh, so what are what, what is the equation of, uh, you know, growth kinetics? So this is what is important when it comes. So and this is again, mostly a theory based topic. Next is structured and unstructured model. Uh, so even from this topic, uh, questions have been asked in previous years. And uh, this could be both theoretical as well as numerical questions. Moving on is uh, batch, fed batch and continuous systems. Uh, so the, defini the definitions and the differences between these systems are to be learned. For example, batch is when the inflow is uh, given all at once and the process is taken place and then outflow is taken all at once. And the continuous system is where the inflow is uh, happening and the process, the production is also happening and uh, as in when the product is being finished, it's also extracted at the same time. So it's a, it's a whole continuous process. Fed batch is again a mixture of both batch as well as continuous system. So these differences are to be known. And next is scaling up. Uh, so scaling up here is a numerical based uh, topic. Uh, so here uh, what uh, we need to learn is how, uh, you know, a system can be upgraded from say a lab scale to a industrial scale or even inside industry itself from a smaller setup to a larger setup. So in such thing cases, we need to know what is the investment that's necessary, what is the profit that can be uh, acquired when such investments are made. So such calculations are important when it comes to scaling up. 
Okay, moving on to the next subsection that is upstream and downstream processing. So here, so this particular topic is a technique intensive uh, topic. So here you need to know what are the methods, what are the principles behind each of these uh, methods and what are the advantages, disadvantages, the salient features, properties. So these are uh, how the unit of this, this subsection goes. First here is sterilization, sterilization of air and media. Uh, this although uh, even numerical uh, questions can come up. Second is filtration. So filtration, talking about membrane filtration and ultrafiltration. So you need to know what are the principles behind these and when, uh, what filtration to use. Next is centrifugation. Obviously, you need to know the formula behind the centrifugation and uh, what is high speed and what is ultra centrifugation. Uh, next is cell disruption. So cell disruption is a method uh, that is used when the product is intracellular. So when the product is intracellular, you are required to break open the cell and then take the product out. So we have various methods used for cell disruption. So you, will requ you are required to know all of these methods and uh, uh, when which method has to be used. So this is also very much necessary. Moving on uh, to chromatography. So we have multiple types of chromatography, ion exchange, gel filtration, hydrophobic interaction, affinity, HPLC, GC. So all of these uh, are different types of chromatography used during different uh, systems, right? So you need to know when, what has to be used, what are the principles behind each of these uh, chromatography procedures. And what are the advantages, disadvantages? What is the stationary phase used? What is the mobile phase used in each of these techniques? So these are what is important and it is a, a theory based topic again. Next, you need to know the differences between adsorption and absorption. Next is extraction. So extraction is when the product is extracellular that is outside the cell. Maybe it's mixed with the media as well. So what are the different types of extracting such uh, products is what we need to learn. Next is drying. So different types of drying, say for example, freeze drying or vacuum drying, spray drying. So all of these uh, are to be learned, the differences, the advantages and disadvantages, so all of these have to be gone through. So the next is the instrumentation process control. Uh, so here the first topic is measuring devices. So here we learn about what are the different devices uh, that is used for measuring temperature, pressure, for say flow control, for say weight, etc. So uh, these are the different, uh, so what devices are being used for each of these is what is necessary to be learned. Next is valves, so different types of valves, what valves say we use for aseptic conditions, so such things need to be learned. Next is first order and second order systems, then feedback and feed forward control. Speaking of controllers, the types of controllers, right? That is uh, proportional, integral, and derivative. So these different types of controller are to be learned. Uh, this is mostly, again, a theory-based uh, subsection. Um, so with this, we come to the end of uh, the important topics to be studied for the gate biotech, especially for unit five bioprocess engineering. Now, which of these topics do you feel is very intensive? Let us know in the comment section below. Thank you so much.